This is Waves Lesson 5, and it's Standing Waves Part 3. So in this, with this equation, there's an associated experiment, and the experiment's on the right-hand side, so I'll try and give a quick overview. First of all, the equation. So the F for this equation is the fundamental frequency, and if you remember the fundamental frequency, that would be for a waveform that looks like this. So F's the fundamental frequency. L the length is is this length that's highlighted there. T is the tension. The tension would be caused by this weight. So if you had a mass, it would be mg for this tension, T. And mu is mass per unit length of the string. So the mass of one meter length of string, essentially. So mu is mass per unit length. Or mass per meter, so kilograms per meter. L is this length, obviously measured in meters. F is the fundamental frequency, the first harmonic. This waveform that I showed you earlier. And that's measured in hertz. T, we've already said, is mg. So essentially what you would do is change the weight, so add masses. And then see how that affects the frequency for the first harmonic. As you add weights, the frequency at which the first harmonic occurs will change. And then you could typically make some type of graph and the exam questions might ask you to find the length or find the mass per unit length of a string. It depends. But it's a standing wave setup. You're looking at the first harmonic or the fundamental frequency. We've got tension, mass per unit length, and we also need to know the length between the bridge and the oscillator. So the, the masses and the weight you know, for the tension is, is very easy. It's just mg. So the question might be, well, how do we measure the frequency? So the oscillator will be attached to one of these a CRO, or cafe, uh, cathode ray oscilloscope. So you might know this already. So how do we get frequency from a cathode ray oscilloscope? On a cathode ray oscilloscope, on the y-axis, you've probably got voltage, and on the x-axis, it's going to be time. So what you would do is measure one time period. So let's just do an example. Let's say each of these divisions is five milliseconds. So what we would do is start at the top of a wave or start somewhere. So we could start there, do one full wave. So I'll try and sketch this out as neat as I can. So down there and back up to that point. So that's one full wave. So that's actually, so we've got 5, 10, 15, 16, about 16.5 small boxes, and each small box obviously one, meter, uh, one millisecond. So we've got 16.5 milliseconds. So to get the frequency, so that would be the frequency is 1 over t, sorry, 1 over the time period. And the 16.5 milliseconds for one full wave is the time period. Time period is the amount of time for one full wave. So the frequency is simply 1 divided by 16.5 times 10 to the minus 3. So if we calculate that, we get 61 hertz in, in this instance. On the signal generator, or the oscillator that it's attached to, you normally can read the frequencies, but you can't you can't really trust that reading. So that's why we use a cathode ray oscilloscope. So we can get a time period, so we can find a frequency. So 
So in this example, I'm going to show you how we would find mu experimentally. So we need to rearrange this to get it into the form y equals mx plus c. So I'm going to square everything to get rid of the square root. So frequency squared or fundamental frequency squared is equal to 1 divided by 4L squared. And then we've got T divided by mu. So I'm actually going to get rid of that 1 and put T divided by 4L squared. And then what's times by mu. And what we can do then, you might be able to see this, is plot a graph of F squared against tension. So frequency squared against tension, which makes sense. The tension is what, we've got, what you can change just by adding masses. And then you measure the effect on the frequency. So that'll be hertz squared or hertz squared. And then if we put it into the form y equals mx plus c, f squared is on the y-axis. So that's on the y-axis. The tension is on the x-axis. So the gradient, the coefficient of t, is 1 over 4L squared mu. So the gradient is 1 divided by... 4L squared mu. So this graph of frequency squared against tension, when you take some results, you should get a, a straight line that goes through the origin. It goes through the origin because plus zero. So plus C will be through the origin. And the gradient of that graph will be the 1 over 4L squared mu. So to get the mass per unit length, it'd simply be Make sure that's a 1. 1 divided by 4 times L squared times the gradient. So experimental cell, change the tension in the string. Use the cathode ray oscilloscope to see how it changes frequency. Plot a graph and the gradient of the, the mu, the mass per unit length, is 1 over... 4L squared times M, the gradient. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's move on from there. So if we use that method and use the gradient to find a measured value, sorry, an experimental value, and then compare it to a measured value, let's just give you some examples. So in this theoretical example, the mass per unit length will be 2 times 10 to the minus 4 kilograms per meter, measured, use, measuring essentially 1 meter of this string using a balance. And then in the experiment from the graph, we got 2.258 times 10 to the minus 4. So you could compare these values. So to do that, we need to do the difference between them. So 2.258 times 10 to the minus 4, subtract, 2 times 10 to the minus 4, and then divide by the real value, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 4. Calculate that. Let's not forget that 8, actually. Apologies. So we get 0 0.129, or 0 0.13, and then just multiply by 100 to give 13%. So that's a percentage error. Commonly asked question in A-level examinations. So let's move on. Hopefully that made sense. Changing the values divided by the true value times 100. So I want you to pause and have a go at this question. I want you to describe an experiment to find the mass per unit length of a piece of string. Include an experimental cell, so a diagram. Description of the technique you would use, so what measurements would you take. And then include the equation and the graphical method for finding mass per unit length. 
So you can use your notes that you've taken, or you could try to do it from memory, or a blend of both. And I'll take you through the answers. So you draw a diagram to find the fundamental frequency of the first harmonic. That's important. That's forgotten with this equation, that the frequency is the fundamental frequency. So please remember that. Add mass and tension. Oh, the tension, sorry. So examples, which I haven't touched on, but, you know, could be between 20 to 200 grams in intervals of 20 grams. Just make sure that you've got a minimum of seven values. You know, you don't want to, you know, do tension of 20 and 25 and that's it. And then try plotting a graph with two, two data points. You know, if we, if we go for seven values, that's okay. There's no point in adding masses greater than 200 grams in this type of experiment with a piece of string. Use a signal generator to change the frequency to find the first harmonic for each mass. So the signal the signal generator will change the frequency, which is obviously connected to the CRO, the cathode ray oscilloscope. And we're going to use the cathode ray oscilloscope to find the frequency value from the time period. We did an example of that earlier. Then plot a suitable graph. So the one that I, the example I gave earlier was frequency squared against tension. And then find mass per unit length from the gradient. So you need to put it in the form y equals mx plus c, like I did earlier. And earlier on, we also got mass per unit length is 1 divided by 4 L squared times the gradient. So I hope that's okay. Uh, I would like to have got this one. It's just a exam style question. So let's pause and have a go. A piano repairer replaces the wire that produces the highest note on a piano. The wire has a vibrating length of 0.05 meters. He uses a wire with the following properties. Diameter, 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Density, 7.8 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed. Calculate the tension required for the vibrating wire to produce its correct frequency of 4.1 kilohertz or 4,100 hertz. I'm going to do that now. So we need the tension, so we definitely need the mass per unit length. Which is mass divided by length. And mass is, well, mass is density times volume. Density is mass over volume. So mass is rho v divided by length. So mass is density times volume divided by length to get mass per unit length. Volume divided by length is area. So density times area. So we need to get the area from the diameter. Now, please be careful. It is the diameter. So if you want to, you can half that and square it. Times it by pi to get the area. So if you do, if you do that, we half to get 1.75 to the power minus 4. So area is 1.75 times 10 to the minus 4 squared times pi, for pi r squared. Then we need to multiply that by the density, 7.8 times 10 to the 3. That gives a mass per unit length of 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 kilograms per meter. Then we need to use the equation for the fundamental frequency and rearrange it to find mu. So if you want to make sure this number is written down, if you haven't already got it, the 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4. So I'm going to make some room. So mu is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 kilograms per meter. Then we've got the equation. The frequency is equal to 1 over 2L times t over mu. And obviously, first of all, we need to square all that and then rearrange to find mu. So frequency squared is equal to t divided by 4L squared mu. Oh no, sorry, rearrange to find tension. So tension is simply frequency squared times 4L squared times mu. That will give us the tension. So it's 4,100 for the frequency squared times 4 times length squared, which is 0 0.05 squared 
times 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 to give us the tension. And the tension is 126 newtons. Hopefully that example went okay. In the next lesson I'm going to do, you know, pick like three of these examples, go through them. So if you need more practice, just watch the next one. Hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.